Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. This is the full video of creating this Next.js app demonstrating the CRUD operations on MongoDB. Now this is basically the app that we're going to create. So we have the option of uh, creating a new topic. Here we can see that we are reading from the database and then we have the option of updating the topics. And then we also have the option of deleting the topic. So we're going to see how to perform all these CRUD operations on MongoDB with this Next.js application. So I have just combined all the videos in this series into this single video. And I will also leave the link of the source code in the description of this video. So let's get started. So this is basically a simple application demonstrating the CRUD operations which are create, read, update and delete operations on MongoDB with a Next.js application. So this is how this website works. We have this main page over here and we have these uh, content over here and all this content is coming from a MongoDB collection. Now first of all we can see we have this button to add a new topic. So if I click on add topic and here we can add a new topic. So I'll just add a new topic. I'll just type Tailwind CSS and let's type a faster way to write CSS and let's click on add topic. And now if we scroll down here we can see that we have the topic added over here and even if I refresh this page the topic will still be there because all this is coming from a database. Or now we can go ahead and delete any of this uh, topic. So if I just click on delete and here we will have this confirmation and if I click on cancel the delete operation will not work. But if I click on OK then now we can see that the content was deleted. And in the same way you can also go ahead and edit these uh, content. So if I click on this edit button over here here we can see that the content is populated over here. So I'll just go ahead and change this to APIs. And let's click on update topic. And now we can see that the topic has updated. So these are basically the CRUD operations in MongoDB. We have the option of adding data. We also have the option of reading the data. And we also have the option of updating the data and also removing the data. Right here I have created this folder called MongoDB CRUD and I just opened it with VS Code. Now let's go ahead and start by opening the terminal. So you can just click on view and click on terminal. And the first thing you need to do is create a next app. Now before doing this you need to have Node.js installed on your system. So if you don't have Node.js installed you can just go to the official website and install it. Once you are done that you can just type npx create next app at latest. And we just type dot to create it in the current directory. Right now let's press enter. Right now let's answer these questions. So for the TypeScript I'll just select no and yes for ESLint and yes for Tailwind CSS and no for source directory and yes for the app router and no for customizing the import alias. So now the application is being created. Alright the next app has been created. Now let's install the packages that we need. So you can just type npm i and we need to install a package called mongoose to connect with our MongoDB database. And then we also need to have React icons to get these icons. So we're going to use React icons for these icons. So let's install these two packages and let's press enter. All right, the packages have been installed. So if I go to package.json file, here we can see all the dependencies. We have mongoose and we also have React icons. So now let's go ahead and open the application. So you can just type npm run dev. And here we can see that the app has been started. So let's open this link localhost 3000. And this is how the app looks right now. Now let's go ahead and uh, customize this. So let's go into the app directory. And let's go to the page file. And I'll just change this to page.jsx. Now let's go ahead and delete everything inside return and for now I'll just type h1 and I'll just type hello and now if we go back to our browser here we can see that hello is being displayed and let's also remove the default styling so let's go to the global.css file and I'll just delete everything from this line of code till here. Right now let's start with the design so the first thing we need to do is create this uh, navbar. So in the navbar we need to have this uh, logo on the left side and this button on the right side. So for that let's go back to our code and uh, let's create a component for that. So let's go outside this app directory and let's create a folder and I'll just name it components. 
and in this we'll create a new file called navbar.jsx and here let's go ahead and type export default function and let's call it navbar and here we'll just return a nav element and in this we need to have a link which is the logo so let's create a link element so i'll just type link and you can import this from next slash link and let's type href and we'll just set it to the home page and inside this link i'll just type gt coding and then we need to have the add topic button so for that also we'll create a link and let's type href and let's set it equal to a page called add topic and in this we'll just type add topic right now let's add this navbar to the layout because we want to have the navbar throughout the application so if you go over here to app and if i click on layout this is the root of our application and here we can see we have html and body tags over here and uh, the children over here is all the content of our application so let's go ahead and uh, add the navbar before the children so here i'll just type less than navbar and i'll just import it from components navbar and now if you go back to our website here we can see that the navbar is being displayed over here now let's style it now before styling this let's add some styles to the layout so here we'll just create a container division so i'll just add everything inside this container division and here i'll just add some styles so i'll just type class name and we will add some tailwind css styles so first of all let's type max w which is for max width and i'll just set it to 3xl and uh, we will set it to the center so i'll just type mx for margin left and margin right and i'll just set it to auto and uh, this is how it looks right now let's go back to the navbar.jsx file and uh, let's add some styles over here so for the nav element let's type class name and we'll just set it to display of flex and uh, we'll type justify between to bring these elements to the extreme right and left sides and we'll also align items to the center so i'll just type items center and now let's go ahead and set the background color to slate 800 and uh, let's set the padding x to 8 and let's set the padding y to 3 so padding x is padding left and right and py is for padding top and bottom and for this link let's add some styles so i'll just have class name and let's set the color of the text to white and let's set the font to bold right now let's style the button so for the button let's type class name and let's set the bg color to white and uh, let's set the padding to 2 and this is the button right that's basically it with the navbar now let's go ahead and design these topics so for that we'll create a new component so let's go back to the page.jsx file and uh, here instead of this uh, heading we will add a component so first of all let's create the component so i'll just go to the file browser and uh, let's go to components and let's create a new file and i'll just name it topics list dot jsx and here i'll just type export default function topics list and return and uh, for now i just type h1 topics and uh, let's go back to the page dot jsx file and uh, let's add the component over here so here i'll just type topics list and we'll just import it from components topics list and we can just delete this image from here right now let's go to the topics list component and uh, let's go ahead and design this component All right let's go ahead and create a react fragment and uh, in this we'll create a division now in this division we'll create another division and uh, in this uh, we will have the topic title and the description so for the topic title let's create an h2 and i'll just have topic title and for the description let's create a div and here i'll just have topic description and then let's create another division for these buttons over here so we need to have the delete and the edit buttons so for that let's go ahead and create a component so we'll create a component called remove btn so let's go over here to components and let's create a new component called remove btn.jsx and here let's tap export default function remove btn and for now i'll just return some text i'll just type remove btn 
and let's go back to the topics list component and here we need to import the component so i'll just type remove btn and then we need to have the edit button so for the edit button we'll create a link so i'll just type link and we'll just import it from next link and let's type href and the href is gonna be a page called edit topic and here we'll also have the id of the topic so for now i'll just type one two three and uh, in this i'll just add the icon so for the icon we'll be using react icons so let's go ahead and type import and we will import an icon called hi pencil art and we will import it from react icons slash hi and uh, here inside this link let's type hi pencil alt and uh, let's set the size to 24 and here we can see we have the edit icon Right now let's go ahead and create the remove button. So let's go to the remove button component. And in the remove button, I'll just create a button element. And here we'll just add the icon. So I'll just type import. And we will import an icon called HI outline trash. And we will import it from react icons HI. And let's go ahead and add the icon over here. So I'll just type HI outline trash. And for this also, I just set the size to 24. And here we have the remove icon. Let's change the color of the icon to red. So I'll just type class name and let's type text red 400. Right now, let's go back to the topics list and uh, let's add some styles over here. So first of all, let's target this container division and uh, let's type class name and uh, we'll set a padding of four and let's set a border and we'll set the border to slate 300 and let's set the margin top and bottom to 3 and uh, let's set it to display of flex and justify between and now we can see that the icons are on the right side and the topic title and description on the left side and we'll also add a gap of 5 right now let's style the h2 so for the h2 let's type class name and let's set the font to bold and we'll set the text to 2xl right now for these buttons uh, we need to have them one next to the other so for this div let's type class name and let's set the display to flex and we will have a gap of 2 and now we can see that the icons are one next to the other now we want to display the icons at the top so here for the container division let's type items start and now we can see that the icons are in the correct place all right so that's basically it with the topics list now if you go back to the main page and here if we just add some topics let's see whether we have any problems in the styling so i'll just create a fragment and i'll just add it over here let's duplicate it a couple more times and we don't seem to have any problems in the styling so let's go ahead and delete these right now the next thing we will do is we'll create the add topic page so now if i click on this add topic button or link we are taken to this 404 page so further let's go over here to the file browser and let's go to app and let's create a new folder called add topic so you need to have the same name over here for the folder so if you go to the nav bar here we can see that we are linking to this add topic page so you have to have the same name over here for this folder and in this folder you need to create a new file called page.jsx and here you can add the code for the page so let's type export default function add topic and uh, let's return a div for now and now if you go ahead and click on this add topic button now we are taken to the add topic page so here in the url you can see that it says localhost 3000 slash add topic so now let's go ahead and style this so I'll just go ahead and delete this div and let's create a form and in this form we need to have two input fields so let's type input and the type will be set to text and uh, let's add a placeholder and uh, let's type topic title and let's add some styles over here so I'll just type class name and uh, we'll just add a border and uh, we'll type border slate 500 and we'll set the padding left and right to 8 and padding top and bottom to 2 and now for the form let's go ahead and add some classes so I'll just type class name and uh, let's type flex and uh, 
flex direction to column. So just have flex call and we'll add a gap of three. Now here we need to add some margin top. So let's go to the layout file. Here for the children, I'll just create one more container division. And I'll just add the children inside this. And for this division, let's add some class names. So I'll just have class name and we'll add a margin top of eight. And now it looks all right. Let's go back to the home page and here we have the topics and let's click on add topic. And uh, here we have the add topic page. All right, let's go back to the add topic page. Right now, let's go ahead and copy this input field and let's paste it down here. And uh, for this one, let's change the placeholder to topic description. And then lastly, we need to have a button. So I'll just type button. And uh, in this button, I'll just type add topic. And let's add some styles to this button. So I'll just type class name. And let's set the background color to green 600. And let's set the font to bold. And uh, let's set the color of the text to white. And uh, let's add a padding top and bottom to three and padding left and right to six. And uh, let's set the width to fit the content. All right, so that's basically it with the add topic page. Now let's create the edit topic page. So for that, let's go back to the file browser and uh, here inside the app folder, let's create a new folder called edit topic. Now for this edit topic, we need to edit a specific topic. So we need to get a parameter from the URL. So for that, you have to create a dynamic route. So let's create a new folder inside that. And here I just call it ID. So you have to add it inside square brackets. And in this, you need to add the page.jsx file. So just a page.jsx. And here let's type export default function, edit topic. And uh, let's return for now, I'll just type edit topic. And now let's go back to the home page and uh, let's click on this edit button. And here we are taken to the edit topic page. Now here for this edit topic page, I'll just create a component for the edit form. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the current topic title and description and we'll pass it to the edit form. So let's go to the components. Let's create a new file called edit topic form dot JSX. And here let's tap export default function edit topic form. And here let's tap edit topic form. And now let's go back to the edit topic page and here let's just import the components. So I'll just type edit topic form from components. Right now let's go to the edit topic form and let's add the code over here. Now this is going to be pretty much the same as the add topic form. So I'll just copy this form from here and I'll just paste it over here. And here, instead of add topic, I'll just type update topic. And here, instead of these placeholders for the input fields, we will have the actual topic and description displayed over here. And with that, we have completed creating the UI of our application. So here we have the home page of the application with the topic list. And then here we have the add topic page. And then here we have the edit topic page. Now the first thing you need to do is create a free account on MongoDB Atlas. So just search for MongoDB Atlas and we'll just click on this link. And let's go ahead and click on sign in. And you can create a new account and just sign into the account. I'll just use my Google account. All right, so I have signed into my MongoDB Atlas account and uh, let's go ahead and create a new project. So you can just go ahead and uh, click on new project over here. And I'll just name this project CRUD. You can name this anything you want. And let's click on next and let's click on create project. And here we can see our project has been created and we can see the name over here. Now you can go ahead and build a database. So let's click on build a database. And I'll just select this free option over here. And uh, let's keep all these options uh, as it is. And let's click on create. And let's add a username over here. So I'll just type GT coding. And here we have the password. So I'll just copy this password from here because we're going to need this. So let's copy this and I'll just paste it inside my code. So I'll just create a new file over here called .env. And here we're going to store the environment variables. And for now, I'll just paste the password over here. And our username is GT coding. So I'll just add that over here as well. 
and uh, now let's go ahead and click on create user and here we can see that the user has been created now let's go ahead and scroll down and here we need to add the IP address to connect to our database so here I'll just type 0, .0, .0, .0 forward slash 0 now this will allow us to connect to our database from anywhere so let's click on add entry and now let's go ahead and click on finish and close and let's click on go to databases right now the next thing we need to do is we need to get the connection string so let's click on connect and you can just click on this option called mongodb for vs code and here we have this connection string so i'll just copy this and let's go back and here let's create a new variable i'll just call it mongodb uri and i'll just paste the connection string over here and here instead of password we need to add this password right here so i'll just copy this and i'll just paste it over here and uh, we can just delete all of this and now you need to add the name of our database so i'll just name it crud db and uh, let's go ahead and save this now it's a good practice to restart your application after you make changes to the environment variables so i'll just open the terminal and uh, i'll just press ctrl c to close the server and uh, let's type npm run dev and here we can see our app has been started once again All right now the first thing we need to do is we need to connect to mongodb so let's create a folder over here and i'll just call it libs and in that i'll just create a new file and i'll just call it mongodb.js and here we will write the code to connect to our mongodb so first of all you have to import mongoose from mongoose and let's create a function called connect mongodb and here we'll just add a try catch and here in try let's go ahead and type mongoose dot connect and uh, here we need to add the mongodb uri so let's go ahead and type process dot env and uh, if you go back to the environment variable here we can see we have this uh, variable called mongodb underscore uri so let's copy this and uh, let's paste it over here and let's also add a console log so I'll just type console.log and uh, let's type connected to mongodb and here in the catch let's go ahead and type console.log error right now let's go ahead and export this so let's type export default connect mongodb right now the next thing we need to do is we need to create a model a model is basically the structure of our collection so let's create a new folder for that and I'll just name it models and let's create a new file over here called topic.js and here we'll just write the code to create the schema so we need to import mongoose and also schema from mongoose and uh, here let's type const and I'll just name it topic schema and we'll just set it equal to new schema and in this we need to add the details of our fields so we need to create a title and uh, for the title we need to have a string and even for the description we need to have a string so let's type string and uh, let's type description and let's type string and then we'll also store the timestamps so it will store the date created and updated so let's type timestamps and I'll just set it to true now let's go ahead and uh, type const and I'll just name it topic and we'll just set it equal to mongoose dot model and uh, here we'll just type topic and here we need to add the schema which is topic schema so I'll just type topic schema and uh, if you already have this model then we don't need to create this model so let's add an or over here and here let's type mongoose dot models dot topic so if you already have this model then it will just get this topic and now let's go ahead and export this so let's type export default topic right that's it with the model now let's go ahead and write the code to perform the crud operations so let's go ahead and in the app folder let's create a new folder called api 
and in this let's create a new folder and I'll just call it topics and in this folder I'll just create a new file and let's call it route.js so you need to call this file the same route.js or it won't work all right now first of all let's write the code to create topics so you need to type export async function and it is going to be a post method so you have to type post and uh, we're going to get a request so i'll just type request you can name this request anything you want and now let's go ahead and uh, get the data from this request now we're going to send the data as json format and uh, we're going to send it as title and description so let's go ahead and destructure the values so i'll just type const and we'll get the values title and description and we're going to get it from request.json and we also need to add await over here because we're going to get a promise so let's tap await request.json now the next thing we need to do is we need to connect to our database so let's tap await connect mongodb and i'll just import it from libs mongodb let's go back to the mongodb.js file and here we need to add await for mongodb connection and uh, here we need to change this function into an async function right now let's go back to the route.js file and uh, let's go ahead and uh, create the topic so for that you have to type await and uh, let's import the topic model so it is imported from models topic and uh, let's type dot create and here we need to add the data so we have title and description so let's type title description and now let's go ahead and return a next response so let's tap return next response and we will import it from next server and let's tap dot json and here let's add a message so just tap message and here we'll just tap topic created and let's also send a status code so let's tap status and let's set it to 201 right now let's see whether this works so let's open postman now postman is an application that you can use to check your api endpoints and you can just go ahead and search for postman and download it to your system and once you open this you will find this screen right here so let's click on plus and here let's add the api endpoint so let's tap http localhost colon 3000 and uh, in that we have API and in that we have topics so let's tap API topics and now if you go back to our MongoDB and if I just refresh this page and if I go to browse collections here we can see that we don't have any collection over here so let's go back and now let's test whether this works so let's change the method to post and let's go over here to body and uh, let's click on raw and I'll just select JSON and here let's add the data so here the first thing we need to have is title and I'll just add a title over here let's go ahead and type HTML and we need to add a description so we need to have description over here so let's type description and here let's type a markup language for websites and now let's go ahead and click on send and let's see whether it works and here we can see we have this message topic created and we also have this status code of 201 and now let's go back to mongodb and let's see whether we have the data so let's refresh this page and here we can see we have this crud db and in that we have this topics collection and in that we have this data so this is the data that we just added let's add one more data so let's change this to let's try css and uh, here i'll just tap cascading style sheet and let's click on send and here we can see topic created let's go back to our mongodb and uh, let's refresh this page and now we can see we have two topics this is the html and this is css so the post method is working all right now let's go ahead and uh, work with the get method so now if you go back to our vs code here let's go ahead and type export async function and we're going to use get method so let's tap get and here let's tap await connect mongodb and uh, let's type await topic dot find 
and this will find all the topics and it will return the topics. So I'll just store it inside a constant called topics. And now let's return a next response. So let's tab return next response dot json and here let's type topics and let's see whether this works so let's go back to our postman and uh, let's select the get method and now let's go ahead and click on send and now we can see that the topics are returned we have the html and css topics so the get method is working all right now let's work with the delete method so here let's tap export async function and uh, the method is delete and here let's tap request now for deleting the topic we're going to send the id of the topic as a search parameter so i'll just store it inside const id and uh, we can get the search param by typing request dot next url dot search params dot get and here we need to add the search param so we'll just send it as id and this will store the id inside this id constant right now let's go ahead and uh, connect to the database so i'll just tap await connect mongodb and here let's tap await topic dot find by id and delete and here we'll just pass the id and let's go ahead and return a next response so let's tap return next response dot json and here let's type message and uh, let's type topic deleted and uh, let's add a status code and uh, let's set it to 200 All right now let's go back to postman and uh, let's see whether the delete method works so let's select the delete method and let's go over here to params and here for the key let's type id and for the value of the id let's get the value from here so we we'll just delete this html topic so i'll just copy this id from here and i'll just paste it over here inside value so this is our url topics question mark id equals and we have the id over here and uh, we have selected delete so let's click on send and let's see whether the delete operation works and here we can see it says topic deleted so let's see whether it is actually deleted so let's select get and uh, i'll just go ahead and click on send and now we can see we have just one topic and if you go back to mongodb and if i just refresh this page now we can see we just have one topic which is css so the delete operation is working all right now the last thing we need to do is work with the update operation now for updating we're going to use a dynamic route so let's go ahead and create a new folder in here and i'll just name it id in square brackets and here let's go ahead and create a new file called route.js and here we can get the id of the topic so here let's go ahead and type export async function and for update we have this function called put and here let's type request and we'll also get the params so let's destructure that and let's type params and let's create this function and we're going to send the params as id so let's tap const and let's destructure id and let's set it equal to params and we're going to get the id from params and now let's go ahead and get the data from the request so we're going to send the data as new title and new description so let's tap const and let's destructure it from request dot json and here let's type new title and i'll just rename it to title and uh, new description and i'll just rename it to description right now let's go ahead and connect to our database so let's tap await connect mongodb and we'll just import it from libs mongodb and here let's type await topic and let's import it from models dot find by id and update and here we need to pass the id and also the new data so let's type title and description and now let's go ahead and return a next response and we will import it from next server and let's type next response dot json and here let's type message and let's type topic edited or updated and let's send a status code of 200 
and here we need to type await. So now let's go ahead and test this out. So let's go back to postman and uh, let's change the method to put and let's copy this ID and let's paste it over here and let's go to body and let's change this to new title because uh, we are getting it as new title and new description. So here let's type new description and let's change the title to updated and also the description to updated and let's see whether it works. So let's click on send. And here we can see it says topic updated. So let's go back to get and let's see whether the topic is updated. So let's click on send. And here we can see it says CSS updated and here also it says updated. So the topic has been updated. Let's go back to MongoDB and let's refresh this page. And uh, here we can see that the topic has been updated. So the update method is working all right. All right now the last thing we need to do is get a single topic by ID. So let's type export async function get and uh, let's type request and here we're going to receive parameters. So let's destructure it. So I'll just type params and let's destructure ID from the params. And uh, now let's go ahead and uh, connect to the database. So I'll just type await connect MongoDB and let's type await topic dot find one. And here we're going to see whether the ID is equal to the ID from the database. So for database, we have this ID with underscore ID. So let's type underscore ID and uh, let's check it with the ID that we get in the params. And I'll just store it inside a const called topic. Now let's go ahead and return it. So I'll just type return next response dot JSON. And here let's type topic and we'll also pass status code of 200. Now before testing this, we need to add some more topics. So if you go back to postman and if I click on send for the get method, we can see that we just have one topic. So let's add some more topics over here. So let's select the post method and let's go to body. And here I'll just change this to title and description. And here let's add some topics. So I'll just type react JS and uh, let's change this to a JavaScript framework and let's click on send. And here we can see a topic has been created. Let's add one more topic. So let's type HTML and uh, let's change this to a markup language and let's click on send. And now just go back to get method and uh, let's click on send. And now here we can see we have these three topics. Now let's get the details of just one of these topics. So I'll just get the details of react.js. So let's copy this ID from here and uh, let's paste it over here. And uh, now let's click on send. And now we can see we just have one topic displayed over here. So this is how you can select just one topic from the collection. So let's go ahead and test another topic. So let's click on send and now let's get this topic of CSS. So let's copy this ID and let's paste it over here and let's click on send. And here we can see we have the CSS topic displayed over here. And with that, we have completed writing the CRUD operations in our next JS application. Right here, I am in my source code and uh, let's go to this page right here. So this is the home page. So if you go to the page.jsx file and here we have this component called topics list. So let's go into the component. You can just press control or command and click. And here we are in this topics list component. Now, if you take a look at this, we can see that the content of uh, the topic is uh, hard coded over here. So we have this topic title and it is displayed over here. Now what we need to do is we need to get this topic title and description from this MongoDB collection. So for that, let's go ahead and uh, first of all, let's fetch the topics. So I'll just go ahead and create a function for that. I just call it get topics and we'll just make it an async function. So let's create an arrow function over here. And here let's add a try catch block. And here in try, let's go ahead and fetch the data. So I'll just type await fetch and uh, we need to go to the endpoint. So if you go over here to the API folder 
Here we have this folder called topics and in that we have this file called route.js and if you go to the file and here we can see we have this get method and in that we are getting back all the topics. So let's go back to the component which is uh, topics list and here let's add the API endpoint. So I'll just type http colon localhost colon 3000 forward slash API forward slash topics. So this is the endpoint that we need to hit. Now by default the fetch method in a next application will cache the data. So once you get the topics and if you make some changes in the database and then if you fetch these uh, topics once again then the updated data will not be fetched because it will store the first data as a cache. So let's go ahead and uh, add an option for that. So we just type cache and we need to set it to no store so that every time we hit this endpoint we need to get the updated data. Right now let's store this result inside a constant. So I'll just type const res equals await fetch. Right now let's go ahead and check whether we have the result. So I'll just type if res dot ok. Well, let me just check whether it is not ok. So I'll just add an exclamation over here. And uh, here let's type throw new error. And uh, here we will throw a new error and I'll just type failed to fetch topics and if we have the data then let's go ahead and return it so I'll just type return res.json and here in the catch let's go ahead and type console.log and I'll just type error loading topics and let's add the error over here right now let's call this function get topics in our topics list component so here let's type await get topics and let's go ahead and destructure the topics from this so I'll just type const topics equals await get topics now here we can see that we have this error that's because uh, we have added await over here so we need to change this into an async function so here I'll just type export default async function right now the topics are being fetched now let's go ahead and uh, map through all the topics and display the topics over here so here inside this react fragment let's go ahead and uh, type topics dot map and for each of the topics I'll just call it T and uh, let's go ahead and return a div so I'll just type parenthesis and now we need to add all this uh, div inside this map so let's cut these uh, ending brackets from here and uh, let's paste it down here so this whole division will be inside this map Right now let's go ahead and change this topic and this description. So if you go back to the MongoDB collection here we can see that we have these keys title and description. So here instead of topic title let's go ahead and type curly braces t.title and here let's type curly braces t.description and here for edit topic we need to add the ID of the topic so let's go back to MongoDB and here we can see for the ID we have this uh, underscore ID so let's go back and here instead of 1 2 3 let's type dollar symbol curly braces and let's add all of this inside backticks and uh, here let's type t dot underscore ID right now let's go back to our website and let's see whether the topics are displayed so here we can see that the topics from the MongoDB database are displayed over here. Let's go ahead and make some changes over here. So I'll just change this uh, title to just CSS. And let's go ahead and click on update. Right now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page. And now we can see that the title has been updated. So we are getting all this data from this MongoDB collection. Right now let's click on this edit button. And here we have the ID of the topic. So here it ends with C56. So here we can see for CSS it ends with C56. Let's go back and let's open the second one. React.js and it ends with C6C. And uh, here we can see for React.js it ends with C6C. So the edit link is working all right. All right now let's go ahead and write the code for the add topic page. So if you go to the add topic page here we can see we have this form and we need to get the data from these input fields and we need to add it to our database so let's go back to our code and here we can see we have this 
page called add topic so this is the form now for this page we need to add interactivity from the client so we need to change this into a client component now by default all the pages and components in next.js project are server components now to change this into a client component you can just type use client over here and now if you go ahead and type console.log and let's type hi and then I'll just go back over here and let's open the console and let's go to the add topic page and here we can see it says hi now if you go ahead and change this into a server component and now if you go ahead and uh, if we refresh this page here we can see that hi is not displayed over here it is displayed in the terminal so if I just open the terminal here we can see that hi is being displayed let me just refresh this page and here we have hi displayed so right now this is a server component so let's go ahead and change this into a client component so I just type use client now the first thing you need to do is you need to get the data from these input fields and we will store it inside a state so let's create states for that so I just type const and I just call it title I just call the function set title equals and let's type use state and let's import it from react and by default the value will be blank and let's do the same for the description so I just type const description set description equals use state and blank by default All right now let's go to the input field and let's add an on change handler so I'll just type on change here we'll just create an arrow function and we need to access the variable over here so we'll call it e and uh, with this parameter you can go ahead and uh, get the data from this input field so here I'll just type set title and here we need to pass e dot target dot value and then we need to set the value of the input field to the value of this state so I'll just type title over here and let's do the same for the description so I'll just copy these two lines of code and let's paste it over here and I'll just change title to description right now let's create a function called handle submit and uh, let's call the function over here on the form on submit so I'll just type on submit and uh, let's type handle submit over here so this function will be called when we click on this submit button so we'll also change this button into a type of submit Right, let's go back over here and uh, let's write this handle submit function now the first thing we need to do is we need to prevent the default behavior so here I'll just type e and uh, here let's type e dot prevent default now this will prevent the default behavior which is refreshing the page once the button is clicked and now first of all let's go ahead and add an input validation so I'll just type if exclamation title or exclamation description so if any of these values is uh, not present then I'll just add an alert so I'll just type title and description are required and uh, let's type return over here right now if you go back to our website and if I click on this add topic button we can see that it says title and description are required now let's go ahead and write the code to add it to our database so for that let's go ahead and create a try catch block and here in the try let's go ahead and uh, use the fetch API so I'll just type await fetch and now we need to change this into an async function so I'll just type async right now here in the fetch let's add the endpoint which is http colon localhost colon 3000 colon API colon topics and here let's add some options so I'll just type method and uh, we need to set the method to post and then we need to add headers so I'll just type headers and uh, in the headers let's type content type and we need to set it to application JSON and uh, then we need to have the body so I'll just type body and we need to add the title and the description which are over here now we need to pass them as JSON so let's type JSON dot stringify and here let's type title and description and let's store the result inside a const so I'll just type const res equals 
await fetch. Now if the topic is created, we need to go back to the home page. So for that we will use router in Next.js. So for that you have to import router. So here let's type import and uh, here let's type use router from next navigation. And here let's type const router equals use router. And here after the topic is created, we need to go to the home page. So let's type if res.ok. Then let's go ahead and type router.push and uh, let's add forward slash over here for the home page. And uh, if it is not the case, then let's add an else. And here let's throw a new error. And uh, here let's type failed to create a topic. And here in the cache, let's go ahead and console.log the error. Right now, let's see whether this works. So let's go back to our website. Here let's add a topic. So let's type JavaScript and here let's type a programming language and uh, let's go ahead and click on add topic. And here we can see that we are taken back to the home page and we have the topic displayed over here. So the topic is being added. Let's go to the MongoDB database and uh, let's refresh this page. And here if we scroll down, here we can see that the JavaScript title is being added over here. So the add topic page is working all right. Let's add a new topic and let's click on add topic. And here we can see that it is being added. Right now let's go ahead and write the functionality of deleting a topic. So when we click on this delete button, we need to delete the topic. So let's go back to our code and let's go back to the topics list component. And uh, here we can see we have this component called remove button. So let's go to the button and here we have this button. Now if you go back to the route and uh, if you scroll down here we have the code for deleting the topic and here we need to get the id as a search param so what we're going to do is if we go back to the topics list component here we can see that we are having access to the id so let's go ahead and send the id to this remove button component so here i just type id equals and here let's type t dot underscore id and now we will be able to have the access to the correct ID in the remove button component. So let's go to this component. Here let's go ahead and uh, get the ID and I'll just destructure it and I'll just type ID over here. Right now let's go ahead and uh, create a function over here and uh, I'll just call it remove topic and this will be an async function. Now here the first thing we will do is we will ask for a confirmation. So let's type const confirmed equals confirm and here let's add are you sure and uh, here let's type if confirmed and if the user clicks on yes then let's go ahead and delete the topic. So I'll just type await and we need to hit the endpoint of http colon localhost colon 3000 forward slash api forward slash topics. And here we also need to send the ID as a search param. So I'll just tap question mark ID equals and let's add the ID over here. So we are getting the ID from here. So I'll just change this into backticks. And here let's type dollar symbol curly braces. Let's tap ID over here and uh, let's set the method to delete. Right now for this button, we need to add an on click. And when we click on this button, we need to call this function. Now since this is a user interaction, we need to change this into a client component. So here at the top, let's type use client. And here let's type on click. And here let's call the function which is remove topic. Right now let's see whether this works. So let's go back to our website. And let's remove this topic right here. So let's click on this delete button. And here we have this confirmation. And if I click on cancel, the topic is not removed. Now let's click on delete and let's click on OK. And now let's refresh this page. And now we can see that the topic is now removed from the home page. Now we had to reload the page after deleting the topic. So for that, let's go back over here and here I'll just reload the page after deletion. So for that, we need to import use router. So I'll just type import use router from next navigation. And here inside this component, let's go ahead and type 
const router equals use router and uh, let's go ahead and uh, type router dot refresh over here inside this if condition and here let's also store it inside a const and uh, here let's type if res dot ok then let's go ahead and uh, refresh the page right now let's go ahead and uh, test it out so let's delete this html topic so let's click on this delete button and let's click on ok and here we can see that the html topic is now deleted and it is refreshed automatically right now the last thing we need to do is we need to write the functionality for this edit topic button so for that let's go back to our code and uh, here we have this page called edit topic and in here we have this component called edit topic form and here we have this form now what we need to do is when we click on this edit button we need to populate this id and description over here so if we click on edit topic over here react.js and uh, this description should be added over here by default so for that let's go back over here and uh, we will send the topic id the topic title and description to this component from the page so let's go back to the page so here we have the page and if you take a look at this we can see that we are having this dynamic route so we are getting the id over here as a param so for that let's go ahead and destructure the params over here so i'll just have params and let's go ahead and uh, destructure the id from that so i'll just have const id equals params and let's go ahead and just console.log it over here so that we know that the id is being received so i'll just have id over here and uh, let's open the terminal and let's go back to our website and uh, let's click on this edit topic button and here we can see that the id is being displayed let's click on another topic so here for javascript let's go ahead and click on edit and here we have the id of that topic so the id is being received correctly now let's go ahead and uh, get the topic from the id so if you go back to this route which is inside this id dynamic route here we have this function to get the specific topic by the id so let's go ahead and uh, use fetch for this endpoint so let's go back to the page and uh, here let's create a function and i'll just call it get topic by id and let's set it equal to an async function and here let's add a try catch block and in the try let's type const res equals await fetch and let's type http colon localhost 3000 api topics and then we need to add the id over here so i'll just change this into backticks and here let's add the id so let's go ahead and uh, get the id over here so i'll just type id over here now when we call this function we will pass the id and let's add the id over here so i'll just type dollar symbol curly braces id now here we need to add cache of no store because uh, we want to get the updated data every time we don't want to have any cache but now let's go ahead and type if res is not okay then i'll just type throw new error and uh, here let's type failed to fetch topic and if everything goes well let's go ahead and return res.json and here in the catch let's go ahead and type console.log error right now let's go ahead and call the function over here so i'll just type await get topic by id and let's pass the id which we are getting over here so i'll just type id and uh, since we are using await we need to change this function into an async function so i'll just type async over here and now let's destructure the topic from the results so i'll just type const topic equals await get topic by id and from this topic let's go ahead and destructure the title and the description so i'll just type const title description equals topic Right now let's go ahead and pass the title the description and the id to this edit topic form so here let's type id equals id title equals title and description equals description right now let's go to this edit topic form and uh, here let's get all these uh, details so here let's type id title description now here in this component we're going to have a lot of client interactions so let's change this into a client component so i'll just type use client 
Now the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to store these uh, title and description inside a state. So let's create a state and uh, let's call it new title and here for the set function I'll just have set new title equals use state and let's import it from react and by default the value will be this title that we get from the page. Right now let's tap const new description set new description equals use state and we will just set the default value as this description. Right now we need to change this new title and new description based on the input that we have inside the input field. So here let's type on change and here let's type e and let's call set new title and let's type e dot target dot value. So this will store the current value of the input field inside this uh, new title state and let's set the value of the input field to the value of new title so I'll just type new title and we'll do the same for the description so I'll just copy this and then let's paste it over here and let's change title to description. Right now let's create the function for handling the submit so I'll just type const handle submit and uh, let's prevent the default behavior so let's type e dot prevent default and here inside this form let's go ahead and type on submit and let's call the function handle submit and here let's add a try catch block and uh, let's type const res equals await fetch and we need to change this into an async function so I'll just type async over here now for editing the value we have this endpoint which is API topics and then we have this ID so let's type HTTP localhost 3000 API topics and here let's add the ID so I'll just change this into backticks and uh, let's type dollar symbol curly braces ID right now let's go ahead and uh, add some options over here so I'll just type method and let's set the method to put and uh, let's type headers and let's set the headers to content type application json and then let's type body and uh, we need to pass it as json so let's type json dot stringify and here let's type new title and new description and here let's go ahead and check whether everything is okay so let's type if res dot okay or i just change this into not okay and uh, here let's type throw new error and let's type failed to update topic and if everything is okay we need to go back to the home page so for that let's go ahead and import use router so i just type import use router from next navigation and here let's type const router equals use router and let's scroll down and here let's type router dot push and we need to go to the home page so let's type forward slash and here in the cache let's type console.log error and let's see whether this works so let's go back and uh, let's go to the home page and let's click on this edit button and we are editing the CSS topic and here we can see that the topic title and the description are populated over here let's go to this uh, topic right here JavaScript and here we have JavaScript and uh, the description displayed over here let's make some changes so I'll just change this to Python and let's click on update and here we still have JavaScript but if we refresh this page now we can see that it says Python so let's go back over here to this edit component and here I'll just also type router dot refresh so that it gives us the updated data right now let's go back over here and uh, let's change this to let's try C++ and let's click on update and now we can see that it is updated over here so everything is working all right I'll just change this to next JS let's click on update and here we have the updated topic let's click on delete and uh, it is deleted over here let's add a new topic I'll just type SSR server side rendering and let's click on add topic and here we have the topic added so everything is working all right so that's basically how you can create a simple application with 
CRUD operations on MongoDB using Next.js. So that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.